Spain's president is determined to hold a referendum on independence from Spain. Aquesta ha estat la reacció al registre de detencions de la Guàrdia Civil. Que no m'agrada la propaganda, perquè és impossible. We begin the program with a story from the Catalonian corner of Spain, which is holding an independence referendum this weekend. The different ways in which the Spanish and Catalan media have reported on the referendum suggest that the coverage is one part journalism and one part propaganda. That reflects the positions of the governments involved, since the national government in Madrid is calling the whole referendum process unconstitutional. TVE, Spain's largest public broadcaster, is a channel once described by its own journalists as a propaganda instrument of the state. News outlets based in Catalonia aren't much better. The widely watched TV3, which gets more than half of its funding from the regional government, has been accused of indoctrinating the Catalan people rather than informing them. Catalan's pro-independence president, Carles Puigdemont, is a former journalist, so he knows a thing or two about shaping the media narrative. He's looking beyond Madrid and has been busily trying to convince international audiences through outlets like the Washington Post, The Guardian and Le Monde, since bridging the media divide in his own country is proving to be a much more difficult task. Our starting point this week is the Catalan capital, Barcelona. Los partidos no independentistas, sus dirigentes o los medios de comunicación están sufriendo episodios de acoso. No va a poder usar el franquismo, no podrá ahora un Estado obsesionado, demofóbico, acabar a mal pueblo de Cataluña. This isn't about two conflicting narratives. The state and private media in Catalonia have drawn up an absolutely hegemonic narrative. One-sided and full of lies. Y tú estás defensant un règim que aposta per la repressió. La gente, por ejemplo, que no quiere la independencia, guarda silencio, están pràcticament todos encerrados en sus casas, muchos por miedo a lo que pueda pasar. Es muy raro. It's very strange to assume that all people are deluded or that they have no mind of their own. And that a single TV station out of the 15 or 20 that broadcast in Catalonia, all of which are Spanish, is capable of mobilizing all this chaos we're seeing in this country. Bien, el intermedio vuelve a llamar a la calma. Spain and its media are so divided that this comedian is offering to play peacekeeper. Recordad que somos los cascos azules de este conflicto. En primer lugar porque nuestra intención es pacificar. Y en segundo lugar porque el azul realza mi mirada. Keeping the peace is a challenge when, in one corner, the Catalan one, stands a regional government determined to go ahead with an independence referendum a Spanish court has ruled unconstitutional. Standing alongside that government in Barcelona is a publicly funded channel, TV3, which has taken a clear stand. Catalan Public Television is broadcasting the advertising calling for participating in the referendum, although it's been forbidden by the Constitutional Court. Ara, més que mai, el futur de Catalunya és a les teves mans. Professionals of the Catalan Public Service Broadcaster, they have denounced what they consider to be a political instrumentalization of their TV. Los medios de comunicación catalanes Catalan media have established a frame of reference which reflects only the nationalist version of reality. They haven't even had to work at it too hard. They've simply excluded more than half of Catalonia's population from their frame of reference. As the Catalan media, both pro-independence and anti, we defend that there is a majority of people who want to sort out the future of Catalonia and decide it with their votes. What divides the Catalan people is how to achieve this, and this division is also visible in the Catalan media. If you look at certain daily newspapers, they have different editorial lines. Some support the right to vote on October 1st, some are against it. I don't see a coherent, unified message. It's exactly the opposite, in fact. There are many voices that articulate different opinions through these outlets. On the print side of the Catalan media, there is diversity to be found. But it's on television where one sees the difference between a diversity of views and a balance of views. 
And it's not just TV3's news broadcasts. The lack of balance is glaring on what Spaniards call tertulias, daytime talk shows. Tertulias are cheap to produce, long on opinion, short on fact, and far from balanced, as this anti-independence voice, who found himself badly outnumbered on TV3, pointed out. Not what the host wanted to hear, but it's hard to argue with the math. To call Spain's national broadcaster, the Madrid-based TVE, a mirror image of Catalonia's TV3 would be an oversimplification. TVE has greater reach. It broadcasts nationwide, whereas TV3 is a regional channel. However, on the question of Catalan independence and the referendum, the imbalance issue plagues both channels. In Catalonia, the influence of the government on public TV is not only a problem in Catalonia, it affects the whole country. It is very easy to fake pluralism, and this is what happens on TVE. But their advantage is that they have a presence across the whole Spanish territory and can portray a deformed message to the rest of Spain. The very same thing also happens in Catalonia. When you see the media coverage from Madrid, there's just one melody, one song which says, no way, they are wrong, they are deluded. A lot of times they say, oh, the opinions in Catalonia are very conditioned and manipulated by their media. La oligarquía catalana manipulan al pueblo. Dices, ¿cómo lo hacen? Pues muy sencillo. Los medios de comunicación para ahí están. But here, every media outlet has a different opinion. Where media outlets are not different, where it's actually coercive and it sounds like they all play the same tune, is in Madrid. I totally agree that TV is not really as neutral and balanced as it should be. For instance, they manipulate the images of the massive demonstrations so they don't transmit the idea that there are that many people in the streets uh, but also in all these chat and debate programs there are no representatives of the independentist movement they are framing the issue from the governmental uh, perspective we contacted TVE numerous times, offering the network a chance to respond to its critics. Our requests went nowhere. As for international news coverage, the Catalan government has clearly outmaneuvered its rivals in Madrid. Independence movements that export their stories are often seen as underdogs by distant news outlets that are less familiar with the granular detail of a contemporary political conflict and more prone to cultural and historical clichés. Catalan's president, Carlos Puigdemont, a former journalist, also knows that when dealing with the foreign news media, it helps to speak their language. Il faut se souvenir, il faut retenir que on a reçu un mandat clair. The advantage of the independence movement here is that the last two presidents of the Catalan parliament, Artur Mas and Carles Puigdemont, communicate very well and speak various languages. They are proficient in English and French. It is clear that those who are pro-independence want to give this conflict an international look and feel to enable European mediation that will negotiate allowing Catalonia to vote in a referendum. That's the strategy, and it's been done very well. There is something really quite tragic going on here as far as journalism is concerned. Journalists are always looking for sensational stories. Any foreign journalists, the Anglo-Saxon ones in particular, are forever looking for even the slightest trace of the Spanish Civil War in contemporary events. So, the sensational approach is to say that we are dealing with a rebellion, an uprising that signals the end of the Spanish constitutional state. That's the approach our foreign colleagues are taking. Spain is not the only country where the international media fall into that trap, resorting to lazy historical clichés. However, the real failings in the coverage lie with news outlets in Barcelona and Madrid. This is a tale of two stories, coming from two cities, with two governments pulling the strings and an electorate that deserves better.